Okay, so today we're going to look at Valley Forge and the winter at Valley Forge. And one of the key things to understand about the winter at Valley Forge is that there has been a, um, a series of defeats that Washington's army has been experiencing um, through the course of this, uh, this war. Uh, it's, it's really amazing that the, the, the United States eventually wins this war just because there's been so many defeats. Uh, there's been a few victories, a key victories uh, even. Um, Saratoga being the biggest one. But that wasn't Washington's army. And the other big vic other victories prior to this that uh, we've talked about are Princeton and Trenton. And uh, those are ra actually rather small. And then after those victories, um, Washington's army continues to face um, defeat uh, time and time again. And his key, he, he really is struggling to keep his army alive. That's the key for him is to keep that army alive, uh, to keep them around to where they don't all... Uh, like go home at the end of their, their enlistments, and their enlistments are short, and so that's a big problem for him. And uh, so at Valley Forge, he's, he's, he really has to make some changes and get some things accomplished here. And that's what we're going to focus on today. So um, essential questions, you need to know what problems Washington faced at winter camp and what were the results of the winter at Valley Forge. Uh, what happens um, with this army afterwards? And this is just a good quote from Washington about his the men at uh, Valley Forge. He says, To see the men without clothes, to cover their nakedness, without blankets to lie upon, without shoes, without a house or hut to cover them until these could be built, and submitting without a murmur is a proof of patience and obedience, which in my opinion can scarcely be paralleled. So he was uh, very impressed with his, um, with his men uh, and all that they were willing to suffer. So this kind of uh, gets gets to what I was talking about earlier, just with a series of defeats after defeats. So prior to uh, the winter at Valley Forge, two major de uh, defeats that Washington's army faced are at the Battle of Brandywine. Uh, there on September 11th, you can see it right here. Um, and then the Battle of Germantown, and this is in October um, of 1777. And from there, they go to Valley Forge, and the British are going to be in Philadelphia. So they're going to be winter camp. They're going to camp and spend their winter in Philadelphia, and the colonists will spend theirs at Valley Forge. And this is um, a big difference. Uh, Philadelphia, the the British occupy Philadelphia, and they're going to be in uh, no problems there. They're going to be enjoying uh, you know meals all the time and and living in homes and and uh, all sorts of situations where they're they're having you know basically a, a fairly easy winter compared to the winter that the colony that the the continental army is going to be facing at valley forge so this is a time of great suffering for george washington's army but it's also a time of retraining or training really and rejuvenation. So much, that's the thing, it says retraining, but really it's training because so much of the army has not really been trained. There hasn't been time for training. There's not professional soldiers. These are, these are farmers and, and craftsmen that have signed up to fight, but they've signed up for short periods of time with very little opportunity for, for real training. And so this is going to be a time for that training. Um, but first, it's going to be a time for suffering. And so here's the big four big problems. This is an answer to one of your essential questions. Uh, food shortages, lack of clothing, lack of shelter, and disease. And this is uh, just a huge problem. And, and one of the things is it's not for like shelter. It's not even just that they don't have shelter, but they don't even have the tools necessary to build the shelters at a, re at a reasonably quick quick pace. You know, there's, you're talking about thousands of soldiers. Thousands of soldiers, if they've got axes and, and the other tools they need, they could have built these the, their own structures rel relatively quickly, but it's not around. Uh, Washington was very frustrated by this situation because he'd asked months and months uh, in advance for the Congress to use the Pennsylvania militia to um, prepare uh, their winter camp and get the supplies there that they needed, and they arrive at Valley Forge and nothing is ready, and it's winter time already, and they don't have food there, and they don't have any kind of shelters. 
Um, so the, the food that they get, uh, they basically have to scavenge for. They would go around to the different uh, neighboring farms and trying to get all the flour um, and, and anything else that they could. Uh, eventually, they end up getting about a pound of bread a day, but that doesn't happen um, right away. And you think a pound of a pound of bread, that's less than a, a like a regular full-size loaf of bread that you get at the grocery store is over a pound of bread. It's actually, hold on, I've got one right here. Let me look. Uh, a full loaf of bread is actually, now, let's see, one pound, eight ounces. So that's like one and a half pounds. So a small loaf of bread is a, that you see at the grocery store is a pound uh, of bread. So that's not a huge amount if that's all you get for the day. Uh, and that's not right away. Um, they have a lot of trouble with food, uh, getting food. And um, you think about the amount of food you need for for thousands of men. If you get a pound of bread a day, well, if you've got a thousand men, that's a thousand pounds of bread you need. Well, they've got a lot more than a thousand men. Um, they've got um, over 10,000 men here at Valley Forge. Uh, the shel lack of shelter is a big problem as well. Um, the pictures you always see show a very snowy winter, but it actually wasn't snow. It's actually just freezing ice and or freezing rain and ice, and 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 so the ground stays wet a lot, and this helps disease to fester. They don't have good shelter, um, and then the disease that they're facing is typhoid, jaundice, dysentery, uh, pneumonia. Um, and many, many people die during the, this uh, because of some of these diseases. Another one that they, they have a little bit of problems with is smallpox. And to avoid this becoming a big problem, um, Washington has his men, his men inoculated. Um, and they all receive an inoculation for smallpox at this time. And this is going to be one thing that really helps to keep Washington's army together. This was, this was, a, a, it was somewhat a controversial kind of thing to do. Um, but it, it saves his army because his army is not going to have to worry about smallpox when other armies will. So here's just a picture of the, the cabins that they had. Um, this is not what they started with, and it takes them a long time to actually build all of these. But this is what the, they look like. They did. They, this shows a wood door, and they didn't necessarily always have a wooden door. Sometimes it's just like a blanket or canvas or something covering it. Um, but you'll notice it also has a chimney. We'll see, next picture we'll see is the inside. And so here you can see their beds. There's three beds in each corner, and there's over here on this other side too. And then it, basically each corner has three beds like that, and that would be 12 people in a cabin. There's a fire there. Uh, it does not, it's not the cleanest place, but it's out of the elements and it keep you warmer than, lips, than sleeping out in the snow and ice. Here's Washington's headquarters. Uh, these, this wasn't built for him. This was a home that they rented, the Army rented from them. Uh, from the owner uh, during the during this winter at Valley Forge. And so this is where Washington and, and many others actually stayed here as well. And you can see a picture here of his um, office where he's uh, writing letters to Congress and, and other uh, officials trying to get supplies and, and everything else that has to do to, to run this army. Uh, one of the key men here, though, is Baron von Steuben. Uh, he is a Prussian uh, drill sergeant, basically. He, he comes with, he, he had worked for, um, he'd, he'd been in the Prussian army and fought um, in, in wars prior, lot, quite a bit of experience. He probably exaggerated a bit about his, um, his rank, but um, he was an excellent trainer. He trained these men well. Um, and the way he did it is he did, they didn't have enough time to, to properly train everybody. Uh, they, they're going to have a few months. Uh, and so what he does is he takes um, a few men from each regiment and trains them for a month, spends a month training them, uh, and then they would spend the next month training their regiments. And he's, of course, overseeing it and helping it all along the way. And then the next month after that, then each of these regiments uh, will um, be trained in kind of large-scale warfare, large-scale tactics and maneuvers, which they had not really received before. And so this kind of explains uh, a little bit more of his methods. Um, they, von Steuben changed the way things were done. He set a single standard and trained the army to use that. So instead of each regiment having their own way of giving commands or each state having their way, there was only one way now, and it's the army way, the Continental Army way. 
And um, this makes a big difference because uh, if, uh, during the during a battle, things happen and, and you end up there's problems and and you need to have orders that are consistent and people following those orders. Another big thing he does is he focuses on bayonet training. Um, and this is going to be a, a huge thing, especially at like the first major battle after uh, Valley Forge, which is the Battle of Monmouth, which is kind of seen as a draw. But uh, really, in a lot of ways, uh, the Americans really push the British off the field of battle. And, and really, in a lot of ways, it's a victory um, for the Americans. And this, all of a sudden, now the Americans can stand toe-to-toe with the British on the field of battle. Uh, we often think of this as a, um, why are the Americans fighting? Why, why do people fight? In these, on these open fields. Well, you have to think about it. In some cases, that's where the fighting has to happen, in an open field. If you can get cover, people will get cover. But uh, there's not always cover available. And when you're using muskets, uh, muskets are not very accurate, and they're fairly slow. You know, They don't just fire. You have to reload each time. And um, while you're reloading, the enemy can charge you with the bayonet. And if you're not quick enough at reloading, then if it takes you a minute to reload, you can cross a long, a large field in a minute, and uh, all of a sudden the enemy is upon you. And so, uh, enemy charging at you is a, a an intimidating sight, and so uh, you've got to be well prepared to take a bayonet charge, but also charge with the bayonet. And uh, doing one or two people charging with bayonet not intimidating. A whole regiment or or larger group, um, very much that can be very intimidating, and uh, the colonists will, the Americans will be able to do that after this winter at Valley Forge. This is a fairly famous picture of uh, of the training, and you can see Be- uh, Von Steuben here in the center training the men, and then uh, Washington watching uh, and seeing how things are going. He also, uh, they also established better camp standards. They put up rows for command, officers, and enlisted men. Uh, the kitch- kitchens are on one side of the camp, latrines on the other, on the downhill side. Uh, and so the results that we end up with um, is that companies, regiments, and brigades move from line to column, column to line. They can load their muskets with precision much quicker than before, prob- not as fast as the British, not um, as fast as they probably should be able to, but faster than before. So to now they can fire you know, maybe a couple times a minute, maybe three times. Uh, the better ones could probably do it uh, three times a minute. Um, and they can then also lead a bayonet charge. Um, and, and, and stand up to one as well. Uh, they increase amount of supplies come in by the end of camp. Uh, new troops are beginning to arrive. And spring brought word of the French alliance. And so all of a sudden, they're going to have more military support. They're going to have better supplies. Uh, they are well trained now. And so what we have is a stronger, dependable force, um, better trained, and hopeful for success that leaves Valley Forge. And as a matter of fact, because of this French alliance, uh, the French, I mean, the, the British are going to leave Philadelphia and going to head back to New York. And in many ways, um, the, 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 the war is looking up. Now, there's still going to be dark days ahead and a lot of opportunity for defeat and loss. But um, you're going to have an army that can face the British on the field of battle uh, and, and uh, be successful. And, and so that's what we have leaving after Valley Forge.